What's up, y'all? Thank you so much for tuning back in to Scorpio TV. Um, this time we have Creepypasta Jr. It's standing in the field. Creepypasta uploaded October 19th, 2021. So just like a short, you know, backstory. So when I uploaded the video, well, when I recorded the video uh, to Nuke's Top 5 that I released on... Friday, which was yesterday, I had told y'all that the video like cut out at the end because my timer went off because I was cooking burgers at the same time that I was recording the video. I didn't realize that they were so close to being done. So long story short, I was eating before I started recording again and fucking my goofy ass like uh Bill got like barbecue sauce all over the shirt. I think it was my go go away shirt. And yeah, so that's why I'm in this shirt. But it's, if only sarcasm burned calories. It's just as good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was clumsy as fuck for that shit. I'm like, fuck, dude, really? But uh, Creepypasta Jr., y'all already know what to expect. You know, definitely legendary guy. Deserves a lot more recognition. Um... All the important links will be down in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let me relight my candle. Staring down at my trembling hand, I keep finding it difficult to focus on the paper underneath. My third cigarette in the last 10 minutes had burnt down to my left knuckle, but I can't seem to bring myself to release it. The only server in the diner this late, an older woman with a kind smile, keeps sparing me glances of concern. I suppose she was a bit taken aback by my sudden appearance into the diner, smelling of smoke with a wild look about me. I was aware that my current appearance might have drawn the curious eye of some of the patrons, but I was hoping that they got enough crazy characters coming through here that my presence would be dismissed. That you wouldn't stick Though, out. Though, aside from myself, the server and who I assume to be the cook in the back, the only other patron is a man sleeping in the booth on the far end of the diner. Facts. I keep making these benign observations because it provides me with a bit of reprieve from thinking about the events leading up to me sitting here. Though my purpose for coming here was to collect my thoughts, and through recollection, try to determine what to do next. I've lived in the same exact house for the majority of my life. It was my parents until they wanted to retire somewhere with a bit more atmosphere. I honestly didn't understand their reasonings, but they ended up leaving the house to me. The house sat on 10 acres of land, and it brushed up against two adjacent farms. You just came up. Our home used to belong to a farmer, but he passed away, and the house was placed on the market when my parents purchased it during my early years. Good shit. One of the neighboring farmlands actually used to belong to the house's original owner, but I guess that land had been sold off to someone willing to work the land. My parents didn't mind as they weren't looking to take up the shovel. They were just looking for a quiet slice of the South to call their own. They left the house to me, an unexpected yet welcomed gift. Years progressed and life was peaceful, albeit a tad lonely. I was never really a social person, even in my youth. Hey. Friends came and went like the passing seasons, Facts. and I couldn't be bothered to seek out new friendships. Facts. Most of my social life comprised of me working, I wasn't unfriendly to my co-workers, but my work was always my priority. The occasional invitation to a gathering of sorts fell off as I rarely took days off. Right. This was becoming apparent to my supervisor, who looked at me with uncertainty. He spoke how grateful he was for my efforts, but for all my years working here, I had never taken a vacation or even a single sick day. Are you goofy as fuck? His worry for my health was apparent though I showed no signs of fatigue. About a month and a half ago, he came to me and told me that he wanted me to take a bit of time off. This came as a bit of a surprise, and before I could object, he held up a hand and told me that there was more to life than simply working non-stop. I withheld my objection, 
and he began rambling about enjoying the simpler things in life. He said that I needed a break, and that stress was not always a visible thing. Thanks. With a heavy sigh and not wanting to hear him go off on another tangent, I agreed to take some time off. He been speaking facts this whole video. Almost immediately, it became apparent that I had no hobbies or desires outside of working. And it's probably all gonna go to My shit. life up until then was plagued by routine. It's all gonna go bad. And once that routine had vanished, I was left in the dark, so to speak. At first, I spent a few days mindlessly binge-watching television until I couldn't stand the repetition. I then decided to start walking around my property outside. I felt getting a bit of fresh air every day would do me some good and give me a bit of perspective. During the mornings, I'd walk down to the mailbox that stood at the end of my long driveway, and in the evenings, I'd wander around the edges of the fields. Then, I'd return inside, make a bit of food, and return to the television until the next day. Towards the end of September, during one of my walks in the evening, I experienced something odd. As I walked the length of the cornfield, I felt eyes upon me, from some unknown source. I paused and looked around, not seeing anything in the vicinity. I continued my walk and returned back to my house. A few more days passed, and at the beginning of October, as I strolled along the dirt path taking in nature, I paused again. In the other field across from the one I was currently standing next to, where I had previously felt someone looking at me, I could see someone standing next to it. Here we go. The sun was dimming, so it was quite difficult to make out who it was. But as I stood there staring, I watched as it slowly faded back into the cornfield, disappearing from view. It must have been a trick of the light, I assured myself, or maybe one of the neighbors was just checking their crops for some reason. Instead, I gave that field a wide berth and returned home. That brings us to now. It was just another day filled with chores and the occasional sitcom. It was early in the evening when I was finishing up an assortment of dishes. I glanced out of the kitchen window and felt a plate drift from my fingers and shatter in the sink. Something was standing in my front yard. It looked very much like the shadowy figure from a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't be sure if it was the same one or not. It seemed like it was wearing a black cloak that encompassed its entire body. I walked from the kitchen over to the front of the house and stepped out onto the porch. As I did, I turned on the porch light which cast a weak beam towards whoever it was. I stood as stoically as I could and stared at this person. I called out to them, asking if there was anything I could do to help them. In my mind, this was clearly some Halloween prank orchestrated by some kids of the town. I don't know about that. I told them that this was all very amusing, but that they should probably leave now. It just remained motionless, just a handful of yards away from my house. I descended my porch steps and took a few steps forward towards whoever it was. I asked them sternly to please leave, but just as the words left my lips, I felt my voice drift off as I could see it much better now. It wasn't wrapped in a black cloak. That was just its skin. Its body shimmered with an unknown wetness. It was wearing some type of torn and tattered rags as clothing. Its jaw hung slack from the rest of its skull. It had no teeth in its mouth. Oh my god. But as my eyes drifted up, I locked them with two red orbs. The eyes had two black crosses for pupils that seemed to stare towards the ground. For the briefest of seconds, I thought I was simply staring at a morbid decoration that someone had placed here. Then it slowly lifted its head up towards me. The sound of leathery skin stretching resonated in my ears. When this happened, I turned and sprinted back towards my front door. I ran inside, slamming and locking the door behind me. I ran into my living room and picked up the landline to call for help. As soon as the receiver touched my ear, all the power in my house cut out. <laughs> the phone was dead silent. Footsteps. 
<laughs> Footsteps echoed behind me as I heard something ascending onto my porch. I turned and watched through the blinds of my window as the figure walked the length of my porch. Shit! It pressed a single hand on the glass of my front door and with a shove, the glass shattered inward, sending shards in multiple directions. I ran up to the second floor of my house and into my bedroom. Panic was sapping my breath from me as I looked for something to defend myself. The lightless interior of my bedroom was hampering my efforts. That's when I recalled my lighter. I pulled out my Zippo, holding it aloft and igniting it. I searched around for something, anything I could use against it. When I heard a creak of the door behind me, in my haste, I had forgotten to lock the door. It towered in the doorway and rested each of its gangly hands on the frame as it almost Hold itself inside my room. How the fuck did you it wheezed and exhaled with each step it took. Whatever this thing was swiped at me with its stick like arms, and I fell back, dropping the lighter next to my bed. In seconds, my entire bed became engulfed in crackling flames. The brightness filled the room, and I saw this creature in all its horror. It looked like a walking corpse, but not quite. It shuffled and moved deliberately. Stringy black hair clung to the sides of its scalp, and its jaw swung loosely with each exasperated breath it took. It's so disgusting. The fire was beginning to spread throughout my room, and I knew it was only a matter of seconds before the smoke would do me in. I tried to crawl around it, but the creature grabbed me by the wrist, lifting me up. Despite its frail appearance, it was strong enough to lift me off the ground completely. I could feel the bones and tendons in my wrist beginning to strain from the pressure of its oh, grasp. God, no. I reached out with my free hand and grabbed a nearby lamp from my desk, and I smashed it into the creature's face and it released me. Fuck. I ran for the door, down the stairs and collapsed outside. No. I keep, turned back keep running. and saw as my house was now succumbing to the fire. In the bedroom window, I spotted it standing there, staring down at me, like some malevolent beast. It then turned and slowly walked back deeper into the house. I didn't stick around to wait for it to come out. I hopped into my old pickup truck and drove out of there, driving clear out of the town. It was only when the fatigue was becoming too much did I stop at this diner. Thankfully, I had this notebook in the glove box so I could write this all down. I don't know what's going to happen from this point forward. I'm terrified, and I'm not sure what to do. I haven't been looking down at the paper as I'm writing this for the last few minutes, so I apologize if it's illegible. But there has been something standing on the road outside of the diner for the last few minutes. Oh my god. And now, it's starting to get closer. This thing is following you. What, what it sounded like he was describing to me was like a scarecrow. But like a fucking possessed, demented ass scarecrow or some shit like that. I don't know. That that's the image that I was getting in my head because it said it stands in the field. So what do you usually see in a field? Like a scarecrow or something to keep like crows away, you know, from eating the food and corn and shit. So I don't know, bro. But he was talking real good. Nothing but facts through the whole fucking. Like the beginning of the video. And like I said, it all went to shit. It all went bad. Just within a few minutes. That's all it fucking took. You know what I love about Creepypasta Jr.? No homo. What I forgot to mention before. Is that he really knows how to paint the picture. And his, the like, the heaviness in his voice. It like assists with painting this picture and keeping you that much more creeped out like from how he described the fucking scarecrow to how he described what was happening to how he described like the people at the diner looking at him like it's just so much detail that he gives he's so descriptive like he paints the picture like good as hell that's another thing I love about Creepy Pasta Jr., bro. Like I said, deserves like way more recognition. Deserves way more subs. Like 
at this current time, he's at 653,000 K subs. This man should have like a million, two million. Because he, he stays putting out decent ass content just like this. And I just don't understand how he isn't more like sought after. How more people don't know about him or check out his content. They don't know what they miss it out on. Because I think he, I believe... Just like uh, Dr. Horror and Mr. Nightmare were f are the two that introduced me to like horror in general when it came to the scary shit, but they were more like scary stories. Creepypasta Jr. was my first official Creepypasta guy. And then I just, uh, you know, picked up on like Creeps McPasta, Mr. Creepypasta, Mr. Creeps. Uh, King Spook and people like that. Actually, one of my most popular Creepypasta reactions, if I'm not mistaken, is Creepypasta Jr. Something about a, like a like the monkey toy from like Toy Story 3. Like, well, that was the picture that was shown um, when the what the toy says when the batteries die or something something along those lines if i'm not mistaken that's that's creepypasta jr that's like one of my most popular reactions is one of my most viewed ones so dude like i and that was like a couple years ago so I, i've been on to this dude's content for a while though dope guy you know fucks with him the uh fucks with him real tough so if you guys want to see more of these Creepypasta Jr. reactions, along with the other Creepypasta guys. Please let me know. You know, in between the scary videos I I watch and the occasional vlogs that I do, I have no problem throwing in a Creepypasta uh, story every now and then. So just let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you drop a like, a comment, share the video, support the channel. Make sure the bell icon is tapped so you will get notified every time I drop new content, which I do Mondays, Fridays, and sometimes Saturdays. This video is done. Uh, I want you guys to stay safe, stay blessed, stay humble. Until next time, I'm out.